Uh, hi, this is Joe again with another review. For the sake of this video, we're going to be discussing the 1961 uh, Western, The Misfits, starring Clark Gable, Lana Monroe, Montgomery Cliff, Thelma Rudd, and Eli Wallach. And the, 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 they may play the main characters. And I should mention this, this was the last film for Clark Gable and the last completed film that Lana Monroe did. Of course, Marilyn Monroe was in the process of filming Something's Gotta Give, and there is a very good documentary up here on YouTube. You should check it out. It's not very long. I believe it's about 45 minutes long because it was an hour show, and I believe it was on Fox, on the Fox Television Network, not the Fox News Network, it was the TV Network, about Something's Gotta Give, which was Marilyn Monroe's last film. And she was, she physically about maybe half the film or three quarters of the film and, and she unfortunately passed away. So but the Misfits was the last film that she actually completed and same thing with Clark Gable, he died just just before uh, the movie was released. So after as he filmed it, the movie he uh, passed away and the movie was released after his death. So it's the last film for those two. Uh, and of course, McCormick Cliff pretty much stopped making movies. I think he also says, uh, passed away, but not right, right there in 1961 or 62. He died, I think, a couple years later. I'm not too sure when he died. But but he pretty much stopped making movies after, after uh, this film. He made very few roles after this, after this film. And But anyway, I went on a tangent there. Of course, the Misfits. You know, the, the way they got the term, you know, the title of the Misfits is because of these horses. Because Clark Gable plays a cow cowboy, like I said. And he, he plays like an old time cowboy who captures horses in the wild. And they're called, and they're, and they're called Misfits in the film. And these wild horses who are out running around, you know, out in the wild. And, in, in the wet in the old in the west well, and it's not really old west because it is a 1961 movie so it's not really based in the 1800s or something and, and there's still wild horses running around and they're called misfits because they're not owned by anybody and they're out running around and so Clark, what Clark Gable does he or his character does his character's name is Gay that's the name of his character Gay um, nowadays, they're going to get away with calling a character gay. I know I had a cousin named was gay, who just passed away. But, but uh, you know, you're not going to call a man, you know, gay unless it has to do something with his sexuality. Uh, you know, in today's standards, this is like over 61 years later, you're not going to get away with calling a man gay unless it has to do with sexuality. So, so anyway, he, Gay, what Gay does is he, he runs around, tries to capture horses, and then he sells the horses to, to a food factory who kills the horses and sells the meat to, and, or process the horse meat to get uh, for dog food. Because most, most dog food companies uh, use uses horse meat. So, so that's what he does. Or, I mean, he doesn't sell, sell the horse to, let's say, a glue factory, stuff like that. He, he sells it to companies who process the horse meat, who kills, no, he kills the horses, but processes the horse meat to, for, um, you know, for, to dog food companies. That's what, that's what he, and that's what he makes, makes his money on, on that. To sell, to sell the horses to, those food companies. And so, so while he, well, so while he's, Trying to go for another run to get to get your, your horses and go or go horse hunting. Basically, he hooks up with Eli Wallach, who who was a pilot during World War Two, and or I should say a former pilot who was a pilot in World War Two, and he flies around and he informs Clark Gable's character where the horses are, so he go travels to where the horses are in, in the Nevada desert. And captures them. Well, that is going on. Clark Gable and Eli Wallach meet Marilyn Monroe, who is there in Reno to get a quickie divorce. And ironically, folks, and I'm not making this up, she was getting a divorce 
from Kevin McCarthy. Of course, those of you who know Kevin McCarthy, he was in the original Evasion of the Body Snatchers movie. So, so only in one scene you, you, you see Kevin McCarthy, hey, that's the guy from uh, the original Evasion of the Body Snatchers. So, so, so there's a little bit tri trivia there as well. And, uh, and anyway, she's there to get a quickie divorce. And the reason why she's getting a divorce from her husband is because her husband doesn't pay any attention to her. Yeah, yeah. You know, she, she 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 she's just basically there living 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 with her husband, and that's all she's doing. She she pretty she pretty much gets pretty much feels ignored by, by her husband, and that's why she wants to divorce. And while she's there, she's rooming with Thelma Miller. Of course, those know Thelma Miller is one of those great character actors from the forties, fifties, and sixties. Uh, most notably, she was James Jimmy Stewart's nurse in Rear Window. And she also played the wo wo the woman who says Macy's ain't got any, nobody's got any, in the original uh, Miracle of Thirty Fourth Street film in nineteen forty seven. She, she was a, it was an uncredited role, but but those are the two roles that I know her from. And and so she she becomes friends, a, a best friends with Marilyn Monroe's character, and all four will hook up with. Uh, L.A. Wallach and Clark Gable. And meanwhile, there was another matcher, another cowboy, playing with Conrad Cliff, who decided to get in on what Clark Gable was doing. So, so Clark Gable was like, okay, you could, uh, Clark Gable was like, okay, you can get in, you get in for like a, like a, like 10% or, or whatever, whatever money you bring in, you get, you get, you get a cut of the, uh, of the pie. Whatever money we, money we get. So, about the last time we had, Half twenty minutes to a half hour of the film. That's when you finally see, and, and this, this is a long movie. It, 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 I mean, it's not very long in terms of other movies I've seen and other movies I reviewed on, on my channel. But but this, but it feels longer than it is, and, and it's only like a two hour four minute film. So so for some people who are short attention spans, it makes it feel like a long movie. But it feels longer than it is because it's. Kind of slow paced. I mean, the I mean the film. I feel in, the, in a way the movie goes all over the place. Uh, but and because of that, it feels longer than this. Believe me, it feels longer than this. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not a knock on the. I'm not knocking the actors. It's just the pace of the movie is is a little bit slower. It, I mean, the pace of the movie is slow, and it feels like it's all over the place, to me. And I am going all over the place in this review because that's what I feel about this movie. And and it's, and it's sad that it's the last movie for Clark Gable, Man and Mo, a movie that's this slow paced, and movie that's all. And, and this is definitely one of the longest movies that I can remember that Man and Mo has done. I know I've reviewed a bunch of Man and Mo movies on my channel. Uh, recently, but most of those movies are like maybe between an hour and a half and maybe an hour forty minutes or an hour forty five minutes tops. This movie is just over two hours, so two hours and four minutes. So, so it's a longer film, and it's much slower paced, and the movie is all over the place. But well, getting back to the film, like I said, you don't see the Clark Gable going after the horses to maybe within the last maybe fifteen twenty minutes of this film. So, so it, it takes a real long time to, to, to see see that, even though you know you know in the back of your mind that it's actually a stunt man trying to capture the horses and, and getting dragged by the horses, which Clark Gable's character does at one point. He gets dragged by, by one of the horses, or, or or the lead horse in this horse pack, and he eventually captures the horse plus other horses. Yeah, you know, there's in this group. There's probably maybe like six. Seven horses all together, and what happens is, uh, man and wall feel so good because it looks like that he would that Clark Gay was going to shoot the, these horses, and then sell the the horse meat to this company like I said like I mentioned earlier. So a man and wall pretty much demanded that he stop don't that he doesn't do it, and Clark Gay goes look that's how I make my money. If you don't, if you don't it's, it's, if you don't like how I make my money you know you can leave. I said, 
and they went out in the middle of the desert, so it's a little hard for her to, to leave because they went in the middle, middle of the desert. Uh, but but she eventually, by her, my man, my man's a attitude and the way she reacts to her, you know, the killing these horses is out in the wild. And at that time, 1961, it's very rare. But now, now that it's so gone now, is you don't have horses in the wild anymore. And pretty much, except maybe maybe Yellowstone Park or something. You don't, you don't have horses out in the wild anymore. You just don't. So so they have these horses, which is very rare out in the wild, being killed for, and they make dog food out of these horses. You know, it's, that's wrong on every level. You know, quite, you know man and Rose, that's wrong for, for Clark Gable to do that. So so eventually the way Clark Gable was able, man and Rose was able to convince Clark Gable to her way of thinking, and he eventually releases all the horses and it finds out that the that the real misfits were not the horses that Clark Gable was trying to capture but all of the main human characters are the real misfits and and it's and you're basically just putting on I mean, Grandma Moore was always considered a misfit even, even though she, of her beauty and her sexuality no in reality but in the films she was always considered a misfit in Hollywood society, and at the time they were setting up prime and making movies in the 1950s, or in the early 60s in this case, and, and <coughs> excuse me, and and so I ha so the the real misfits, of Clark Gable, Montgomery Cliff, Marilyn Monroe, Eli Wallach, and Thelma Miller, those were the real misfits, and not the horses. And, and it's really, I mean, I picked up that solo change in the real misfits with these five characters and not the five or six horses when you catch those, those were not the misfits because they were together in the pack. Same thing that these five characters are, are, are together and it's like society doesn't give two cents of these, of these people in reality and they just having to form this bond because hey, we're misfits too. Even though nobody really, you know, says it, you know, kind of like a Rudolph, Rudolph, the those reading with the old misfits, you know, that, so, and, and Rudolph came out like three years later. The, the Rudolph, the Reynolds Reindeer special came out like three years after this movie. So who knows, maybe they got the whole bit of the misfits from, from this, from this film. This film got an influence on, on Rudolph, on, on one of the most famous Christmas specials of all time. You know, from the, and, and I know I'm stretching it a bit. But, but but that's how I uh, felt about this movie. That maybe the Misfits movie had an effect, an effect on on Rudolph the Red Reindeer. And of course, like I said earlier, within a year, Man Monroe uh, was killed by the Cannies. And that's if you believe in the conspiracy theory, that she was killed by the conspiracy by the Canning brothers, and the conspiracy theory. Of course, he. Uh, the Clark Gable died before the movie was even released, so so you have two, you know, iconic actors, especially more, uh, uh, more Clark Gable than Marilyn Monroe. I mean, Marilyn Monroe was iconic because of her sexuality and and, his, and, and all that, marrying Joe DiMaggio and all that, but but of course Clark Gable was also an iconic actor in a lot of ways. Uh, so, but, so, so this movie is really quite sad because this is the last movie you see these two act, act, actors in there. And the movie was, like I said earlier, it was kind of boring. And slow, uh, I know I'm repeating myself, but slow paced and, and everything else. And that's why I felt about this movie. It's like way too slow paced. You know, for, for my taste. So let me review the movie The Misfits. Please click on the video. Please read it. Please subscribe to my channel. Please forward this video onto your Facebook pages. You can check out all my reviews and only on my YouTube channel at rallyc.com. That's all W-D-Y, the letter C.com. The homepage of the Rally Reviewer, Christine Moore. And please check out all of his videos on his website. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.